Did you win an Emmy for Project Forgive? Has Project Forgive launched? The Project Forgive, the five minute video launched. We're in the process of garnering, we're making a real movie. It's a real million dollar Hollywood movie. We've got a real producer, his name is Scott Rosenfeld. He's a guy that um, produced Julia Roberts. He discovered her, he did all the Home Alone movies. He's one of our producers. And um, we've already garnered nearly 400,000 of the million dollar budget, which actually is kind of low for Hollywood standards. Probably got a, maybe a third of the movie shot. And we're just piecemealing as we go. We're raising money, we're having philanthropists come in. Um, we've got investor packages created, so we're just doing it as we go. Like I just got back from India. We just filmed some segments in India and uh, got another big fundraisers coming up. And I'm just going with the flow, which is very different for me in terms of production and winning Emmys because usually I'll get a company that'll jump in, a corporation, and we'll sponsor it, and boom, I'm off. And this has been very different. And it's been exquisite for me. It's been an exquisite learning and going with the flow. And yeah, it's it's all good. But no, Project Forgive hasn't won an Emmy yet. It was nominated for one. Um, most of my Emmys come from documentaries that I did on PBS and um, some public service announcements. And I just found out just recently that we were put in this public service announcement for Project Forgive, but it didn't win. And it's all good. We'll win something else. Hmm. You have six like, Emmys. Now, yeah. And they're right yep. behind you. Yep, and my game now, yep, they are right behind me. My game now is an Oscar, because we're playing for an Oscar for a documentary on Project for You. Okay. So that's the game. What was it like to get the first Emmy? Yeah, it was. Actually, I, well, what's funny is, and back to this realm of love, fear, and forgiveness, right? I was nominated 10 times for an Emmy before I won. 10 times. And staying in that fear mode, because when you can move out of fear and forgive yourself for not winning, you can actually find solutions. And when I got to that point where I could forgive myself for not winning because I really wanted to win, I was able to find solutions and start really looking up, how do you win an Emmy? What's the formula? What has won in the past? So I started doing some of that research. Boom, that's when I won. And I'm already in that phase with Oscars. What wins an Oscar? What do you got to do? What's the protocol? What elements have to be involved? So I'm already in that process with, with winning an Oscar. Yeah, I think those are useful questions and can be applied to any business, but what, what are the components of an Oscar-winning film or documentary? Well, there's a couple. One of, you, have to be reviewed, you have to be reviewed by two large newspapers, like the New York Times and the Los Angeles Times. Most people don't know that, so they go and put their nomination in for an Oscar and they weren't reviewed. Um, another thing you have to have is you have to premiere in a major city. A lot of folks don't know that. There's some specific cities that you have to do that in. So there's some compelling um, pre-research that you have to do to make sure when your film comes out that it's eligible for an Oscar. Uh, and what about for an Emmy? You know, an Emmy usually has some kind of an emotional pull. It's, it's, it's an authentic conversation that has an emotional pull. That's what I saw most of the time. And everything that I have done that has won an Emmy has an emotional, and, it, and I don't want, it's not a manipulation. Because a lot of times you'll see commercials that will use an emotional manipulation. Like if you get, if you wear this perfume and you'll get skinny, you know, it just, there's no <laughs> connect. And, um, and there's something authentic and emotional that has Emmys win. And it depends on the, the category that you're joining, whether it's if you're doing a PSA or a documentary, or an actual news story. There's different elements for each different categories that you have to look at. I like that, but what is uh, what is your favorite part of Project Forgive so far? You have 30% of it filmed? Yep. How about I tell you my favorite interview? Your favorite interview? Yeah, I've done about 25 interviews so far and I've got nine that I'll probably use that are so compelling. Um, the rest of the interviews that don't make it in the movie will go in a DVD series. And, of course, we'll be using focus groups to make sure it's the most compelling, drop-dead, authentic conversations. Because when we do this movie, you are going to be compelled to watch. Your jaw is going to drop, and you're not going to be able to look away. That's the game. And there's a gal. Her name is Valerie Shepard. I know her through the Evolutionary Business Council, which is actually located in or, uh, is created in Calgary with a gal named Teresa de Grobois. And it's a bunch of speakers and trainers that are committed to making a difference on the planet. They're just authentically in that conversation. And I interviewed this gal, Valerie, who is African-American. We have a different conversation of African-American here in the U.S. than you guys in Canada. I know that just Very from being in Canada. It's, it's uh, like, it's, 
ex, um, excruciating. It's night and day. It's night and day. They, they're not even in the same conversation. And we have a lot of pain around the African-American conversation, most, mostly because of slavery and all the things that's happened here in the U.S. And Valerie is a medium-skinned black woman, and she calls herself an African-American. And one of her, the biggest conversation that she's creating right now for self-forgiveness for herself, and this is deep, I've never heard it talked about like this, is she's forgiving herself for being black, which is an odd conversation to have. And one of the things that she's encountered as a black person is because of her skin color, because of the way she articulates. She articulates like a white person, for the lack of a better way to say it. And she's never felt embraced by her community. And she's black. And she's never felt embraced by the white community. She's not white. And to talk about this so poignantly and so deeply and so intimately is jaw-dropping breakthrough stuff because a lot of the conversations we talk about in the U.S. are about racism. Um, never get, They never get to this level of depth of pain and anguish about identity. And you, she's so courageous. And it was just a really moving conversation. Do you think there's a lot of that, um, that emotion, that kind of story going on under um, in the undertones that just don't get talked about in the Absolutely. U.S.? Absolutely. And I think it's everywhere because I see it in the Latino community. I work a lot in diverse groups because I work in corporate diversity. And uh, same thing happens with curvy women who are Latina and they want to be long, lean and slim and, and blonde hair in the white community. Like there's a longing for that. Like there's something wrong with their Latina identity and not that there is. And it's a conversation. Um, uh, I see it also in the Asian community with the shape of eyes. It's a conversation that's not really talked about a whole lot. And uh, I'm just really inspired by it. And the same thing could be talked about. Here's a very odd conversation. You want another odd one? Yeah, let's go with another right. one. Here's another odd one for people as they age because our, our communities are aging. The baby boomers are getting larger. And there's a conversation. This is a weird one, Sean. It's about bladder leakage. So women my age, okay, women my age, we're 48 years old, things happen to your body as you get older that no one talks about. No one talks about. And um, companies like Kimberly Clark, they have a product called Poise. They have blogs. They have social media experts normalizing some of these experiences for women when they cough and they kind of go to the bathroom in their pants, for lack of a better way to say it. No one talks about this. The shame around this is horrific for women, especially women that are in shape, that are aging gracefully. No one talks about this conversation. And it's so neat to talk about aging in such an authentic way um, for people that it really impacts. And I'm inspired by conversations like that. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to like, share, and comment below. Subscribe to this channel for more interviews. And if you want to go further and be live on the interviews, you can go to mmt.tv forward slash live to find out how. Like on Facebook and follow on Twitter to ask your questions. And be sure to get on the mailing list. Go to mmt.tv to get access to all the things that are not contained in these interviews. All the links are mentioned below. And until next time, break the rules, change the game, and be a rock star.